very end of the Baal Shem Tov's life. And I, I, I've been thinking a lot. We, we haven't had this sheet in a long time, so I've had a lot of time to decide what I should and shouldn't talk about. There are so many stories of the Baal Shem Tov. On a sheet. There's so many stories of the Baal Shem Tov. And, and uh, I, I guess the right wording is you have to develop a healthy skepticism towards stories of the Baal Shem Tov. Because I, I, I read from, a, from a, a Yid who's reputable who says that there were people who made up Hanasa making up stories. Pasha. Pasha computer. Pasha used to invent stories because why? Chassidim were into Maizah Bichlach. Chassidim used to read all these stories. So people, Pasha, made up Hanasa making Maizah Bichlach. This guy claims, and it's a, it's a pretty good claim because he brings good rayas. But he, he brings rayas and he brings history. He brings the names of people. There was a particular person who was a Chassidim Shayid who used to tell Emerson Isis, then Erz Nebuchadnezzar up from Veg. He became Pasha completely fry. He changed his name and continued telling stories. And you have to know, you buy a safer of his if it was Kedem Shiyotza, the Tarbusra, or the Shpetet. No, but you, Pasha, the, the historians was two of them Vesi. One of the most famous Chabad storybooks is called Shifchei Haraf. Shifchei Haraf is even older than the Beis Rebbe. Shifchei Haraf is quoted in the Beis Rebbe. And he writes that he knows... I, I remember reading an article, he writes the name of the Mechaber and where he lived and so on, that the Shiv Chayrav was written in a time when he was pushed unreliable, and Pashaf and Maises. And he proves it, he brings Rayas, you know. So stories of Hasidic Sherebis and so forth, you really need to have a good source. It's not a Pasha Tazach. Our Rebbe was obsessive about this. When the Rebbe told a story, he would say, But the Rebbe, if the Friedrich Rebbe told him a Maises, it was Emes. Otherwise, you know, Chassidim tells stories. And the Rebbe would very often say, Chassidim tells a story, and he, he doesn't know if it's true or not, but Mustamet Sam is that kind of thing. I mean, for example, of the Dugma, the Rebbe said, a Dugma, that the, when the Rebbe Rashab was sitting Shiva for the Rebbe Marash, Chassidim did tell, and I said that they saw during the Shiva the Rebbe Rashab walking around in his sacks, because he was a novel, with his Chavir, Rebbe Yankov Motre Paltavir, walking back and forth in the house, in the middle of the Shiva, speaking Chassidus. So the Rebbe says it's pushed it physically impossible. Because the Rebbe Rash was nostalgic, late in the day you'd give multishri. The Avelis, because of Sukkot, was less than 24 hours. You understand? It was, not, it, was push it, it was physically impossible for there to have been time during the, the few hours of Avelis, the Rebbe Rash should have time to sit and talk to the about the Rebbe. But the Rebbe says, but they don't tell stories like this about me and you, kind of, you know. It's ain ain cheshin ladam ali and yeshpe. The fact that they sell such a sipa. There's even many stories that Baal Shem Tev that Friedrich himself tells that I didn't tell you, you know. But we're going to leave it. I, 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 we're going to leave it. This is what it is. And like I told you, Bishas Maise, the Sefer of Sipur Abal Shem, outside of the Friedrich Rebbe, which we know to be reliable, is the Shifchei Abal Shem Tev. There's letters from the Rebbe, I heard from the Rebbe myself in Sikhis. The Shifchei Abal Shem Tev was printed during the lifetime of the Alter Rebbe. During the lifetime of Al-Tarab was printed by the Mordechai Yafa, who I think was Al-Tarab is It was written very shortly after Al-Tarab was Nistalek, within a few years. And um, the Al-Tarab looked over the Sefer, and the Al-Tarab gave a haskam, an oral Haskam, there's no written Haskam on the Sefer. Shiv Chayab is reliable, and trust me, there's some pretty crazy stories in that Sefer, Shiv Chayab In fact, the very beginning of Shiv Chayab is like eight or nine pages, depending on your print. Of what the Baal Shem Tov's father, Rebbe Yezer, Mishugin Amaisis, and at the end of those stories, it says At Kan Misipuri Haraf, like eight or ten pages. The Shem Baal Shem Tov is really wacky. So it's At Kan Misipuri Haraf. People say Haraf means Al Tareb. Al Tareb was called Haraf. Yeah, Al Tareb gave Sipuri. So the Shifchei Baal Shem Tov is reliable. So having said that, we're going to move on. Be mezakit. Okay, I talked to you, we've been a lot of time talking about the Baal Shem Tev. What remains for us to discuss is the Baal Shem Tev's historicals. I told you the story with the Frankists, right? That in the summer of Tovkuf Yates, the Baal Shem Tev had a big struggle with this group of people called Frank. There was a leader named Frank who were Shabtaim. They were Hemshech and Shabtai Tzvi who had lived almost 100 years before. And I told you the story. To me, it's so shocking that the Baal Shem Tev declared a Yom Tev. Erev Reshchidish Tammuz, Tovkov Yutes, Chovtes Sivan, that means, what's the Yom Tif? That this group of Jews, 
who were called Frankists, they were matzliach to push them out of Gvul Yisro. In other words, they got the government to recognize them not as Jews, but as a different religion. Now think about the Baal Shem Tov, whose whole Metziah is what we have to Alecha Kamoicha. Under those conditions, the same Baal Shem Tov felt that the only solution to the problem was to push them out of Gvul Yisro. And the story is brought, and again, I, I didn't see it for feeding it up. And the Baal Shem Tov said that in order to defeat the Frankish, he's going to have to have Mesiris Nefesh. And that the Maisa was going to pass away within the year, which is why this Chag, this Yom Tif, this Mayyad, nobody even knows about it. I first saw a, a letter, which was signed by three Gidelim, one of them was the Baal Shem Tif, announcing the Yom Tif. The Yom Tif never happened because the Baal Shem Tif passed away the following Shavuos. So when the first occasion for the celebration, this Yom Tif occurred, the Baal Shem Tif had already passed away, it looks like that's why the Yom Tif did not occur. Anyway, the story of Baal Shem Tif is talking about in Shibcha Baal Shem Tif. And the close the Sipur is, Baal Shem Tev never really got sick. He pushed it, became Ogishvach, became weaker. He was 62 years old. He became weak. And um, the Chavrai Kedish were worried about him. It was after Pesach. He would sit a whole day in his room. And when things became a little bit difficult for him, they put in a bell, a manual bell. And he would ring a bell and put my name in the And the Baal Shem Tev started to get hoarse. His voice became lower and lower. But he... He wasn't ill. He pushed became cholosh, up yishvach. One of the famous Tamid Abba Shem Tev was a yid by the name of Reb David Lekis. And they didn't know what to do. Abba Shem Tev was getting sicker and weaker. And they felt that Abba Shem Tev needs to see a physician, needs to see a doctor. And um, there was nobody to tell the Abba Shem Tev. Who's going to ask the Abba Shem Tev to see a doctor? So after much negotiating and contemplating and struggling, it was decided that Reb David Lekis would go into the Abba Shem Tev. And by Matziah, to the Baal Shem Tev, he should see a medical doctor. So he came into the Baal Shem Tev, and he, however he did it, but he said to the Baal Shem Tev that perhaps the Baal Shem Tev allowed himself to be examined by a doctor. The Baal Shem Tev looked at him and says, David, you're also from those people who think that, this is, that I'm that kind of person. In other words, I need a doctor. <laughs> a doctor's put exactly what I need. In other words, how could it be that you should even contemplate that you should bring to me a doctor? That was the end of the doctor. He says, he never saw a doctor. And I want you to know, into the sand, the Rebbe Rashab was ill and they also said they want to bring him a doctor and he said yeah bring a doctor but he said it with such sarcasm in other words the way he said yeah it was so obvious like bring me all your doctors the doctor's not going to help if this is my time this is my time Dr. Schmachter in other words Tzadik and this Madrega if this is what the Abishna wants this is what's going to be and finished until Shavuos Shavuos the Baal Shantav actually said Teira on Shavuos he had a tish with the Chavarai Kadisha. And he was nostalgic. He passed away the first day Shavuos. There's a story that's told in a lot of different ways. But the close Hasipur is that the Baal Shem Tev was surrounded by his Talmidim. I don't know how many, but there was a number of Talmidim there. And he told every single Talmud his future. What's going to be with him until the end of his life? The, the way the Baal Shem Tev did this was he told a story. And in the story, there were various different people, various principles, doing various different things. And every one of the Talmudim recognized which one was them. And throughout the story, the Baal Shem Tev related, they heard the events that were going to occur with them until they would begin to finish, until they would pass away. And when the Talmud of Baal Shem Tev used to meet later in life, they used to ask each other, Vu in the Maisa. Where are you holding in the story? In other words, their way of keeping track of each other was each one knew the future for the whole the rest of life of their chavedim vu house in the mice I mean how, the reason I'm telling you the story is that when the when the Remed Lahardok and the Remed Levitim went to Eretz Yisrael Tov Kuf Lamet Ches Tov Kuf Lamet Ches what's that Tov 17 78 something like that so in root they met the Toldos Yankav Yasef the Yankav Yasef Mepul No the Toldos Yankav Yasef was a very very great very very great he was the first of the great Tamid Abal Shem Tev. Some people say, yes, show him him. I heard this from Rabbi Reuben, that he was older than the Baal Shem Tev. Somebody told me that he was born in Tough Men, which meant that he was almost 20 years, 20 years the Baal Shem Tev senior, and he passed away over 100. He was a very, very big gun, a very, very big tzaddik. And they told us, had like a Yechanan, he has very, very long eyebrows. And he couldn't see because of his eyebrows. Rabbi Yechanan used to sit by the mikveh. You know, Rabbi Yechanan sit by the mikveh. He had a lot of sit by the mikveh, it's not theistic. He had, at Michigan Zen Posh, he had long eyebrows. There's a Gemara in Bava Kama where he had to pick up his eyebrow and take a look at Rav Kana. So they told the Smiths, the Mendel of Vitebsker, 
And he says to the Med Levit, he says, Vu halts to the mice. That's how I know. That's how the story is known. Where are you holding in the story? So the Med Levit said, I halt in front and connect his solemn. I'm waiting at his solemn. So the Tolder says to him, Oi Bazai, if that's the case, Vu is their yid, Vu is the younger man. Where is the young man whose tater is shining from one end of the world to the next? And the men of the pointed at Alter Rebbe. So the Talmud picked up his eyebrow, <laughs> took a look. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and the Hemsha Hasipa was that they convinced Alter Rebbe not to go to Eretz Yisrael, to stay in Russia, and to continue supporting the Chassidim in Russia. The Chassidim in Russia was Alter Rebbe. So this is what happened. Bashem the way passed away, told us he put, and each one of the Talmudim knew from the story what was going to be his hemsha. passed away. Now, of course, the big controversy is. First of all, you should know that for a long time there was a Chkiro Drisha, whether the Vashem passed away the first day she was or the second day she was. The reason for this controversy is two. Two things. Number one, it's a known fact in the world of those who know, as the Vashem Tev had stark mechabav gewesen dem zweiten tag shvuas. The Vashem had a strong chvivis or the second day shvuas. It's known in the Chesidish circles amongst the Gedolim that the Vashem had a special chvivis for the second day shvuas. So people assumed since they knew the Vashemta was the Salak Hashvuas, so Mestami passed away the second day, and during his lifetime he had a Chavivas, the second day Shavuas, because he anticipated his yard side. The Rebbe says in the Sikhah that the Vashemta of Chavivas for the second day Shavuas was, quote, that Ershte Tog Noch Matantene. It's the first complete 24 hour day after Matantene. In other words, it had nothing to do with him. In Chabad, there was always a tradition that Vashemta passed away the first day Shavuas, not the second day Shavuas. And there was a Remes. The remez is that it says in Chazal, V'yeim harvi nitlu hamairis. Which means, V'yeim harvi on Wednesday nitlu with a tof. The, the luminaries, the sun, the moon, and the stars were hung in the sky. V'yeim harvi nitlu hamairis with a tof. So Chassidim used to say, V'yeim harvi nitlu hamairis with a tes. That on Wednesday, the ma'iris, the light, the sources of light were removed. And the first day, shu, the second day was can't be Wednesday. In tof kuf chof, which was 1760, the year the Bashant of this Talkos, Shwus was Wednesday and Thursday. And based on this Ramez, by Yay Maravi, Nitlaham Aidas, but that test, we know that the Bashem to pass by the first day Shwus. And this was a controversy to Alta Bachlaikis. Even today you'll hear people talking about it. But in the last fifteen or twenty years, a Khoikir and Echisro, I don't even know if he's from, reprinted Shivka Bashamtiv. And I bought his copy, I have it at home, I have several Shivka Bashamtivs, with nice artists. And in the back of a sefer, the front of a sefer, he brings from a siddur, a siddur, which was written by the son of Rabbi Yankov Koppel. Rabbi Yankov Koppel was the Tamidi Abal Shem Tev. Rabbi Yankov Koppel was the Abal Shem Tev sefer. When Rabbi needed things written, but I think Rabbi Yankov Koppel is the source of this, the, kiss, the siddur Arizal. I don't know if you guys know this. There's four different versions of siddur Arizal. Four. There's Zalkeve, there's Siddur Ab Osher, there's Rab Shapsai, which is the one we use, and the Siddur Rabbi Yankov Kapo. Rabbi Yankov Kapo was in Hamid Abal Shemtiv, and his son wrote a, a Siddur, or he wrote something in a Siddur. The bottom line is he was pushed by the Abal Shemtiv's Levaya. He was present at the Levaya. And he wrote Baksav Yad, you know, today is such and such a day. A few days ago, the Abal Shemtiv passed away on the first day, Shavuos, and so forth. So today, if you, if you push it one of follow historical documents, there's no more Suffolk. We know for sure that it was the first day Shavuos. But this creates a new Kasha. The halacha is that if someone passes away the first day Yom Tev, you have to bury him the second day Yom Tev, Ayadei Akum, through a Goy. And the idea, the thought that the Abal Shemtiv would be buried through Goyim doesn't seem plausible. So when the Rebbe Rashab in a Fabrengen, Ibi Gechazat, the Der Vot, repeated this word, that the Baal Shem Tev would the first day Shavuos, and the Rebbe, the Yehima Revi, in Nitlo Metates, Nitlo Hamayres. So the Fili Gerem said to the Rebbe Rashab, Kum Tachoyis, that the Baal Shem Tev's Guf Kodesh was Mishtamish Adei Akum on the second day Shavuos. And the Rebbe Rashab answered very cryptically, and he said, Mikin Guf Kodesh, Baal Shem Tev, Hatzich Kedin Nish Gedarf Misasegzan. With the holy body of the Baal Shem Tev, there was no need for anybody else to be misasik. You know, as like it says in Rashi, Rav Yik Pereisi have a guy who covered us at Rashi is by Meisha Rabbeinu. Rav Yik Pereisi have a guy who buried Meisha Rabbeinu. Who buried Meisha Rabbeinu? Who covered us at me? Who covered? He, he went and he buried himself. So he had been goof covered from Baal Shem Tev. What does that mean? And how does it answer the question? I don't know, and I really don't know. My hashara is. My hashara is that Hashem Tov's was after Shavuos. That's my hashara. 
And halachically, if you're doing it for the COVID of this person, you're allowed to delay the alavai. But this was the vart. This was the vart. The vart that the Rebbe Rashab said, the Bashan needed no help. Midachtach. And midachtach means I'm not sure, but I think it's written that when the Bashan passed away, they did a tahara. So they made a goyro amongst the Tamidim, Chavrai Kedisha, who would do which part of the tahara. And that the Bashan was Teufel his Reish. The he, he was already after the Histalkus. He Teufeled himself. His head, he Teufeled himself. I, I'm sure it says this by the musician Magid. Al Rebbe was Zeichi. Reisha Kess and Paz, but the Maggid passed away also. They made a goyro. Who should do which part of the Tahara? And the Alter Rebbe swore that the Maggid tabled himself. Not the Histalkas. Okay. This is the story of Bashan Now there's a very interesting word, which is worth sharing. And the word is that the Baal Shem, it's brought into my mother, Chsidis. The Baal Shem Tev said that he could be Eile Bisara Hashamayim like a Yawano. If he wanted, he could be Eile Bisara Hashamayim. But he wants to go through the union of Elofar Tosho. It says in Teir of Elofar Tosho, you have to return to the Dos. So the Baal Tov says he wants to go through the union of Elofar Tosho. So there's a Loshan from one of the Rabbeim. Three Tzadikim and a Chushan Elam Hazim. One of them was other Edition, the second one I forget, the third was the Baal Shem Tev, because of this Vat. He understood the Maile of being buried, you know. If, you know, this is the story. Could have been Eilu Besara Hashemaim, and he elects instead, you know, in Kabbalah Svar. Yo, when Nabi has a goof in Eilu Mayitzidah, that's a closet in Eilu Mayitzidah where he keeps his goof. And when he used to come and tell him, how's he goes to Eilu Mayitzidah, you know, and he puts on his goof. Okay, Hashem Tev is just out. Now, Hashem Tev passed away. The Baal Shem Tev was an incredible personality, unbelievable personality, and the the, the influence of the Baal Shem Tev is un- immeasurable. In other words, the way he changed the the seer of Yidden, especially in the part of the world where he lived, Poland, Galicia, Ukraine, that part is unbelievable. He changed everything, and his lifetime was full, full, packed with incredible good deeds. He helped so many people. He was a Baal I mean, you know. Forget, when you want to bring out that someone is a Baal Meifes, you say he's like the Baal Shem Tev. Baal Shem Tev is a Baal Unbelievable, yeah. Goyim feared him and respected him and so forth. The Baal Shem Tev's Histalkus created an immediate vacuum. The Baal Shem Tev is gone. Begash means. What's going to happen now? So, of course, at the center of the movement, you had the Tzadikim. Like I explained to you, that the Baal Shem Tev was Bespalo, that should give him a Milo. Shishim Giboyri, the Baal Shem Tev had 60 warriors, 60 tzaddikim, who were Hilchem Bedarke, one of the Derech and Hilchem Baal Shem Tev, who now had to be Mamali Mekoyim Kotche. I mean, some of the famous names, the Pichas Koretzev, the Michalus Lachev, the Wolf Kitzis, the Betelus Yankov Yasef, the Mizitcher Magi, these are the famous Tamid Baal Shem. But the movement needed a leader. A movement needs a leader. Who's going to be the leader? So the logical candidate for the successor to the Baal Shem Tev was where the din is, the Baal Shem Tev had a son of Tzvi. The Baal Shem Tev had two children, a son and a daughter. I think I spoke about it already on an earlier occasion. Reb Tzvi was a very, very big tzaddik. And the daughter was Adl. Of the two of them, the one that's more famous is Adl. In the Chassidish world, they talk much more about Adl than about the Reb Tzvi. And there's, there's, there's Chassidish dynasties that are Baal Shem Tev's. Most Hasidic Rebbes come from the Talmidim of the Baal Shem Tev, you know. But there actually is certain Hasidic and the Pasha of the Baal Shem Tev's Enikl. I mean, the Nachem of course, is famous. Is the Baal Shem Tev's Enikl. Measure Bush is the Baal Shem Tev's There are Hasidic and the Pasha direct that sends the Halik and Baal Shem Tev. I met Kama Vakama people. But Pasha Baal Shem Tev's Enikl. I met a Yid. You have a schus from time to time. You meet real Jews. I had two such experiences. I went and we would go to Halucha. I had two such experiences, two different places. One was here in Flatbush, one was in Manhattan. Yidin by the name Horowitz, Levim. And as soon as you meet them, you see this is pushing real, real people. It's, it's so hard for me to explain to you the feeling. You meet a real person. The humility and the emiskite and the goodskite and the guys were full of toyota. I mean, go on him. I bet here in Barpa, in Flapash, I eat. He didn't wear streimel, Shabbos and Yom Tov. He didn't wear streimel. He took one look at it, so he pushed a holy man. Okay, I will not that. But I met in Manhattan a very chosh of Erov, Horowitz, a very big time of His shul was mostly non chsidim And one of the Yugalites there told me that Reb Moshe, 
Ramosha used to send the Talmidim of Tiferes Yerushalayim to make Shalshudas with this Yid. Ramosha Feinstein, who was not a Chosid. Ramosha used to send the Talmidim, it's very nearby. Ramosha Feinstein is in, 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 in the east side. He would send the Talmidim to have Shalshudas with this Rabbi Horowitz. I used to come every Shabbos after Fabrengen and speak in the show, he would listen to me. <laughs> so he told me that he is a direct descendant of the Baal Shem Tif. I, I think it was nine or ten daughters. And he had them aside in his Mishpacha. That any time you're in a matter of Sakona, you should say the Deiris of the Baal Shem Tev backwards. From yourself, backwards. In other words, let's say, he, you know, your mother, your mother's father, it's still the Baal Shem Tev. He said, I went through the whole Holocaust with this Gula. And not only I saved myself, I saved a whole bunch of people who were with me. He said they were in the forests in Russia, and they were come upon them, that the Nazis were upon them. And he would say this, and they would lose him. Like the I don't know who... If the Baal Shem Tev said it, but there was a tradition amongst <coughs> Mishpacha Sa Baal Shem Tev. I know Kama Vakama. You know the Freedmen, Avram of Freed, yeah, man of Freedmen, they're descendants of the Helik of Baal Shem Tev. It's not Pasha, Baal Shem Tev Zainikla. But of the Baal Shem Tev's Mishpacha, the, the children of the daughter Adl are much more famous than the Tzvi. As I told you, Adl's name is Rosh Tevis Eish Das Lomay. Baal Shem Tev said that when he had a daughter, he, needed, he, he took the Neshama nish- from the Taita. The Baal Shem Tev's daughter is the Neshama from the Taita. It's a pretty good trick. You give your daughter the Neshama from the Taita. As they state, Adl. Her children are very famous. They go Machne Ephraim, the Baruch Mezhubush, and so forth. So the Tzvi was made, the Baal Shem Tev's Malamokim. Rabbi was a very, very big tzaddik. He doesn't to talk about. He was a Kaddish. But Rabbi Tzvi did not have leadership skills. He was not at all a man. He didn't have what it took to be a leader. Leadership is not pushed. Leadership requires vision. Leadership requires strength. Leadership requires principle. And leadership requires toughness. I mean, especially in those times, the Misnagdim were not fools. The Misnagdim did not trust Hasidus. And remember, in the times of the Baal Shem Tev, I would say to you that the Hisnagdus was mostly the Shem Shemayim. The, in other words, the Machloik of Chassidim and Hisnagdim lasted 70 years, at least. For the time to the Baal Shem Tev, they passed away 70 years, almost 80 years, yeah. At the end, the Machloik was political, angry, vicious. In the beginning of the, you know, the Neid of Yehud was a Menagat to the Baal Shem Tev. These people felt that Apitoida, they were Shalas with Chassidus. When the Ma'ag Baal Shem Tev passed away, they knew, here's our moment. Any kind of movement especially a movement whose central nukude is a munas tzaddikim. In other words, that the tzaddik plays such a central role in the chassidus, when the tzaddik goes away, this is the perfect time to try and destroy the movement. And that's exactly what happened. The Baal Shem Tev was nostalgic, and the Misnagdim saw this as their chance to now destroy chassidus because they felt without a leader, they could do what they wished. And they were successful. Because Rabbi Tzvi had no leadership skills. He didn't have what it took to be a leader. They made him the Rebbe right away. You know, they say that by Pilot, this is not a Chabad, but by, I don't know if you can imagine this. By Pilot Shechsidim, when the Rebbe passes away, by the Levaya, they say Mazel Tov. You know that? By the Levaya. A Rebbe, a Tzadik passes Imagine a Tzadik passes away. I'm talking about a real Tzadik. A real Tzadik. That you're going to miss. You know, you're going to miss him, yeah? By his Levaya, they would announce that Mamala Makayme is this and this particular son. And we have a Mazel Tov. And this is how the Rebbe Stavir went. I heard once, this is Tamazay Amaisa from Pelisha. The Heliket Rebbe, the Sholom Belzer passed away. The first Belzer Rebbe passed away. The first Belzer Rebbe, the Belzer Rebbe were unbelievable Tzadik. The Mamala Makayme was Rebbe Shia Le Belzer. They call him in Belzer, called him the Mittler Ruv. The Bishola Belzer was the youngest of the children of Shalom Belzer. The oldest son of the, the Belzer of Shalom Belzer was Rabbi Moshe, Rabbi Moshe Kubriner, I think. So by the Levaya, everybody assumed that the Mamala was going to be the oldest son. And uh, he got up and he said, I'm, I, I need the Psukim inside. He said, Vahib in Sayah Ha'aren. When they carry the Arden of the Belzerov, now Moshe has to speak, his name was Moshe. And if you look in the Hemshech of Sukkim, he said, uh, he, he, he crowned his younger brother, Yeshua. Azam Moshe. In the Psukkim, it's, he quoted the Pasuk where it says that you have a Chumash Bamidbar. No, no, you need a Chumash Bamidbar. Or a Chitaz. It's not that important. Okay, you'll take a look inside. The point is, he quoted a pasuk where the Mamalamakam of Moshe Rabbeinu was not who you thought it should be, but it was Yeshua. And he got up, his name was Moshe, and he crowned his younger brother. So they made the Tzvi Rebbe, and the Tamidi Abal Shemte saw the Hizdardros. You know how a movement works? 
every movement is measured by its periphery, by its borders. In other words, you have a movement, you always have people who are the diehards, you know, the people who are very dedicated. Those people will always be there. But you don't have a movement if you have 15 people you know, who, who serve the Abish themselves never. A movement is measured in its influence on the masses, on the Amch. So you have the people who are the center, who are very stark. Then you have, so to speak, the median, the middle. And then you have the fringe. You know, in the Polish world, they call them the Shkutsim. You know, the Chassidish Rebbe say, Ma'ana Shkutsim. Every Chassidish Rebbe had Shkutsim. They were close to the Rebbe. What's the Bashanin? If you would start up the Rebbe, they'll chop your head off. Otherwise, forget about it. You, know. you measure a movement in its periphery. And when a movement starts to wane and weaken, that's where you see it. The people who are come, come involved start to fall away. And they saw it happening. The Baal Shem Tov was an incredible leader. And he had gathered an incredible following. And the movement started to wither. It started to wane. But what could you do? Neb Tzvi is the Nasi, is the Rebbe. And he's the boss. And you follow his lead. And this is what happened. For a year, Neb Tzvi had gefirt. And Mastam, he said, Tede, I, I don't know if any of his Tedes are recorded. But this was his Nasiyas. Until the first yard site. The first yard site was Shvuiz Tov Kuf Chof Aleph. Reb Tzvi sat Parish HaShulchan and he said Torah. And after he finished saying Torah, he said, I heard from a Polish here that he said, the Tat is yet to be Amir Gevezen. But in the Sikh, it doesn't say it that way. He says, the Tat of Amir Gevezen. Reb Tzvi says, my father came to me. When the Tat of Amir Gezok, my father told me, the Shechina and the whole heavenly Pamal, the holy entourage goes over to the bed, the Mitzvah, the Mitzvah of Agat, who was sitting at the table. Lomer and Vinchen Mazel Tov. What an honor. You're not going to sleep, you're not going to eat, you have no peace. Thank you very much. Mazel Tov, yeah. Lomer and Vinchen Mazel Tov. We'll give him Mazel Tov. And er wird sitzen in my nut, and ich will sit in his nut. He'll sit in my place, and I'll sit in his place. And kach have They got up. This was how they were coupled in the see us. There was no, there was no votes. There was no kiss for his cash. That's what the story was. They changed their begadalian because the Rebbe, the Nasi, wore a different color, like a felt color as opposed to a silk color. And the Mitzvah Magid sat by Reisha Shulchan. Reb Tzvi took the seat of the Magid and the Mitzvah Magid sat and he said a Maimir. And it's known that the Maimir, the first title of the Mitzvah Magid is Marei Maseim, which is from the Merkava, or Shvuas. Marei Maseim, whatever it is... Uh, the pasuk in 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 the Cheskel, which we say in the um, in the Merkava, this is this, and this is what happened. The Bashat Magid became the Nasi. The Tzvi's Mesiras Nefesh is is been recorded for posterity. Everybody talks about what it means to have been a Rebbe and have given it up. Because the truth is that when you're idle and Shias, you get more than the You know, there's a, there's a Maimer Chazal. That when a person is mashpia and somebody else, he gets elef pomem koch, elef pomem koch. A person who was who was zoyche to be given these, uh, whatever you want to call them, giluyim, these koiches, should step down and give it to somebody else. This is extraordinary. We know stories of famous famous tzaddikim who once they took it, they don't want to give it up because they push it felt the gvaldik giluyim that you have from it. The humility that Nevis had left Tzvi, that he was already oil l'gdula. And then he was yaded, and he gave it away to somebody else. And he, after that, he pushed did not act as a Rebbe. It's, it's, it, in the world of Hasidus, it's one of those episodes which is told with Waldeke Hadassah HaKovet, the Mesiris Nefesh. And I heard a story, and I can't remember it. <laughs> I heard a story very recently. The Tzvi Poshim was on Oni Meduka. He had no money. He lost his job. <laughs> a Rebbe is a panosa. Yeah? It's a job. I knew what you did, Rabbi Wadowski, lived in Kran Heights in the last years of his life. He was close to the Skalene Rebbe. The Friedrich is Skalene. Skalene Rebbe lived here in Kran and Albany for most of his life. And I remember him. Skalene Rebbe was a very special man. He's Davin in 770. So the Skalene Rebbe told him once, Shafa Shulten the It's a cursed profession. It's a Panosa. <laughs> Being a Rebbe is also a way to make a living. Shafa Shulten the Panosa. Three Poshet lost his job. He said, Panosa. A man was Poshet starving. So they had to play up the whole scheme how they could provide him with Panosa without him realizing that he's being assisted. I forgot the story, but there's Azaz Siput. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm telling you a story that I don't know, but I heard it recently, I forgot from whom. He wouldn't take a handout. I had to play a whole shtick. 
he lost his job. He was a rabbi. Oh, he's a rabbi. Finished, you know. You get fired. No more panasa. And how they had to help him. Because we have to be found as B'nai Be'ezeh. The Mezich magid was an unbelievable man. Begashmi is the Mezich magid was a very, very limited man. He was an invalid. He couldn't walk. It says in Paylish Asfar, the Magid was not able to go to Mikvah. He never went to the Mikvah because of his physical health. It says that Magid got to Mikvah for Sheikh to come. The Mezich Magid was there, Zeh Huh? That's why he didn't do it. He was ill. He was a sick man. He was a very... And, and by the way, again, to, this is not for feeding him. Sikhs, Paylish should tell you. I'm telling you straight. You have to take every... Unless it's a Sikh and feeding him, you got to take him with a grain of salt. But that's a, he was a very, but he was an unbelievable leader. In spite of his physical limitations, and he couldn't walk, and he was stuck in one place. So you do it. It doesn't have game even. The difference in the Baal Shem Tev and the Magid was, Baal Shem Tev was mad by Ben He traveled constantly. The Baal Shem Tev went. Like Avraham Avinu. He tra- and the Magid, like the Yitzhak Avinu, he sat in his place. He never went any place. But he was an incredible leader. And as soon as he was given the Yitzhak of Nesiyas, as soon as he became the Nasi, he organized Hasidus, and he gave it back its heart. And immediately the Talmudim saw the future. They saw how he is going to keep Hasidus strong. The thing that's complicated about the Nesiyas and the Magad, and the Mitzvah Hashem, of course, we're going to have time to talk about this, is that the Baal Shem Tev was the Rebbe of Hasidus. Why? It was his, it was his business, right? He was the founder, he was the inventor. It's also Rebbe. When the Magad became a Rebbe, he had friends. Some of them were older than him. Most of them were by the Baal Shem Tev longer than him. And these were Tzadikim Gmurim. Tamid Baal Shem Tev, Tzadikim Gmurim. And it was now a little bit weird. You know, he's the Nasi, which means everybody has to come to him. So the Tamid Baal Shem used to come to the Magid, not the Talmidim, but the, I guess you'd call it Talmud Chover. And read in the Shas about the, about the Nasiyas, you know, Levi and uh, New. Levi and who knew? Come on, help me. But there's a story with Levi. Let me start like the Maiser. As Levi is is not given the Nasi. Yes, the Gemara in Ksuba Sefer, or the effect is coming in 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 Bismedish. And the Gemara is like somebody else was given the Nasiyus, and Levi did not contend it, but he didn't come to the Shiurim. And there was somebody else was Kishtanim at Levi. And as the Gemara it wasn't pushed in the times of the Shas also. You know, the Rabbi, Rabbi Yasef. So Rabbi Yasef said, let the Rabbi go first. Why? Because Rabbi Yasef was told he's going to be a Nasi for two years. But the two years start from the beginning of the Nasi. So Rabbi was Malach for Shvas, Rishon, for 17 years. So Rabbi Yasef was Maidach Yom, and then he had his two years. So even then, there was not so push it. So they used to come to the Baal Shem, to, to the Magid. Not Mamishal to tell me them. So we know stories, the famous Maizah Pechaz Koratzer with the Ksav of Chsidis. The Bechil Michal is He used to come to the, Baal Shem, to the Magid to be a Mizrich, to show deference, but he made his own tish. When he came, he made his own Shabbos, and the Magid sent out to the Rebbe to Shabbos. Next time we get together, we'll talk about the Mizrich and Magid.